Mark, can you speak to, we've been talking about listening, but I'm wondering if you can speak to the importance of silence in this work. I think our culture encourages us to always have something to say, to know what the right thing is to say, but your approach seems a little different. Can you speak to that? It feels like it'd be really, you know, like, like, um, wise to just not speak at all to the question about silence just stay silent but i'm not gonna <laughs> that'd be a great sound bite <laughs> yeah that's great <laughs> silence um, well so one of the things one of the ways just to back up a little bit the way i think about youth work is not just in terms of the language or the ideas the doctrines of religion that that i want to make available it's also about a set of experiences i'm trying to give young people a set of experiences that that are you know that are the the way of Jesus that are the practices that cultivate and enlarge the soul one of the experiences I want to give young people is experiences of silence another word I might use for that is an experience of intimacy or an experience of presence or an experience of direct ex, you know direct experience direct encounter with the world so so silence is one of the ways that that happens now and we all know there's different kinds of silence right there's there's the, the, sh the shaming silence there's the silence in a family because no one's willing to talk about the grief that's there or whatever i'm talking about a different kind of silence i'm talking about a silence that's um curious that's um open that's um leisurely maybe even that's awake that, that's it's sort of uh as you were saying earlier kind of filled with wonder or awe. And there's little ways you can do this. You know, I, in youth group, I've tried to give young people little sips of silence. So that might mean, and, and you know, you always have to go at things that slant with, <laughs> you know, young people. So it might mean like, okay, you know, the food's on the table and, you know, let's all gather around and I'm going to say a little prayer. And I might pause. Everybody bows their heads. They all know what they're supposed to do. But I might wait 15 seconds before saying a word just a little quiet and kind of allow that quiet to descend. And then, okay, we're so grateful. You know, just let the, let it sit in. Um, you know, I, I might, I might do that in even conversation with young people. You know, somebody says, it just really sucks. You know, this COVID is just terrible. I, you know, I'm not, I, I feel like, why am I even going to school? I might wait a pause or two just to let the person feel themselves in the quiet you know, before speaking. So just allowing a lot more room. Um, but yes, I think it's a necessary, if there's no silence, if it's just me speaking, then it's very difficult for young people to become religious interpreters themselves. Like, where do they get the moments where they get to say, okay, okay, Mark, you're telling me about Jesus, blah, blah, blah. But what am I perceiving? What is happening in the world? Who am I? What am I actually feeling? And the quiet allows that kind of, and you have to be willing to sit there because you know the first thing young people feel or adults as well is bored. You know, like, like you remove all the activity and all the world words. And, you know, we all go like, I really wish I could pick up my phone right now. Like, you know, what's going on? So, um, so, they, so you have to allow them to kind of sit through the boredom. Or sometimes you, you find ways that they can engage the silence. You give them a piece of clay. You have them write, you give them, I, I spread out crayons on the floor and paper, like when they were little children and say, you know, just in the, we're just gonna have a 20 minutes of, of silence. I just want you to draw whatever you're feeling, whatever pictures, whatever colors, but they're getting, they're working that muscle of being in, in present and in, in the silence. So you may, sometimes you have to give them something to do with their hands or tell them to take a walk in the silence. So it might not be just sitting upright, you know, like a, a formal meditation, um, but they do need to work that much. It's a muscle. I want them to come out of my youth ministry having worked that muscle and strengthened it. 